For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If there's one thing that is assured, that man is born to die. Death is going to happen. And death is a plan that we don't know when it's going to happen. And yet death will happen. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The reason why man dies is because he's a sinner. The wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, I had one person come to me and say, you know, I never sin, I'm not a sinner. And I told that person that over your grave, I will say you are a sinner. Death is coming. But for some people, they think that death is it. That's it, final. And it's not. That the Bible speaks about an afterlife. A life after death. That according to the Bible, there is heaven or there is hell. And there is no other place. And heaven, after you die, is only obtained through Jesus Christ. And a soul that enters into a place called hell has gone to hell because he has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the question is, saved from what? In your typical modern church today, there is no hell. But what does the Bible save you from? That the Bible says, he that has the Son, Jesus, has everlasting life. Amen. But he that has not the Son, Jesus, shall not see life but the wrath of God. So when we see, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, what are you saved from? The wrath of God. And what is the wrath of God after you die? It's a place called hell. And both heaven and hell are eternal. Which means there is no time. There is no end. Whether you go into the glory of heaven, you'll never come out of heaven. Whether you go into the torments of hell, you'll never come out of hell. That whether you want to go to heaven, or you want to go to hell, it all relies on what you do in the person of Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is God, suffered and died according to the Scriptures on Calvary's cross and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures.
There is nothing you can do that can come even close to the merit that Jesus Christ done. First of all, Jesus is God and you are not. Second of all, Jesus Christ was sinless and you are not. You were born in trespass and sin. Third of all, the means of God's sacrifice is the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You are not the Lamb of God. In the Bible, you are referenced as a goat, an unsaved goat. You're not even a sheep yet. One is not likened to a sheep in the Bible until he has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will separate the nations, the sheep as the goats. And to the sheep are allowed into the millennium and the goats are cast off into hell. And yet the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, for you that have sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you're going to die because you are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. You need the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world because if you die in your sin, that's rejection of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And you don't go to heaven. I don't care if you think you're going to heaven. I don't care if you believe you're going to heaven. If you die without Jesus Christ, biblically, you're not going. You will go to hell. You will die in your sins in rejection of what God has done for you, what God has offered to you. And when you reject God, God will reject you. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Some people think, well, you know, if I continue against God and I don't do what God says and I avoid the Bible and I avoid the teaching of the Bible and I don't want anything to do with the Bible, I don't want anything to do with Jesus, I don't want anything to do with the preacher and the preaching, but I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to go to heaven outside what the Bible says. I'm going to go to heaven outside what God says. I'm going to go to heaven outside of what God... No, you can't. You see, if you hate Jesus, you won't enjoy heaven. If you can't stand the Bible and you are irksome to the Bible, you won't enjoy heaven. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. The Bible is in heaven. And Jesus Christ is in heaven. And you're here at the farmer's market, you say, I can't stand that preacher, I hate that preacher, but I'm going to go to heaven. Well, let me tell you, Jesus is in heaven, the Bible's in heaven, I'll be in heaven, they'll be preaching in heaven. How are you going to enjoy heaven? In heaven, we're going to have fellowship, we're going to have singing to Jesus, we're going to have preaching about Jesus. Jesus will be preaching and teaching, and we'll be singing. Exactly what you hear Saturday mornings, here at the farmer's market. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ. Or the burial of Jesus Christ. And what's more important but three days and three nights, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, man will die. 
and typically you would bury a dead body. Typically. But many and most and all humans, after three days and three nights, they're still in the ground. And a lot of times, after three days and three nights, they haven't even been put in the ground yet. And you say, well, preacher, what's the difference between religion, my religion, and your Jesus that you preach? The empty tomb. Jesus Christ and the empty tomb settles your religion. You say, well, preacher, you know, I'm Catholic and we celebrate, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Then let me ask you, why does your necklace have Jesus still nailed to the cross? Why does your crucifix Jesus is still nailed to the cross. Now, you're looking at a Polish Roman Catholic for 18 years. I know what I'm talking about. The Catholic Church still has Jesus nailed to the cross. That's not the Bible. He's been taken off that cross. He has been buried according to the Scriptures, and he arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. He's not nailed to that cross no more like the Catholics have him. But see, if you have a God that's nailed to the cross, you can control that God. You can take that God wherever you want to because he ain't going to get up and go if he's nailed to the cross still. People will come up to me and they'll show me their crucifix. That's anti-scripture. He died. He was buried. He wasn't buried with the cross. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There's no cross. And that death and that burial and that resurrection is the signing and the sealing of life, of going to heaven, if you will only believe that God died on that cross. They buried God. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And yet, if you're a Jehovah Witness, Jehovah Witnesses will proclaim to you that Jesus is not God. And that God is not Jesus. And I'm here to tell you according to the Bible. The Jehovah Witness doctrine is a doctrine of the devil and of Satan. Because one of Jesus' disciples, Thomas, proclaimed to us, after the resurrection to Jesus speaking to Jesus the Holy Spirit records Thomas saying my Lord my God and Jesus did not rebuke him at all And I even had Jehovah Witnesses look at that Bible verse, and they'd never seen that Bible verse, and they were amazed at that Bible verse, and I hope they have come out of Jehovah Witnessism and come into Jesus. And even Jesus himself, John chapter 10, verse 30, I, Jesus, and the Father, God, are one. You see, if I take your religion and if I match it with a King James Bible, your religion does not match the Bible. 
That makes it deception. That makes it a lie. It makes it a heresy. And yet the biblical Christianity of Jesus Christ suffering, Jesus Christ being buried and risen from the dead three days and three nights according to the scriptures makes it biblically correct. Jesus Christ was born of the tribe of Judah, of Israel, according to the scriptures. He was born of a virgin, according to the scriptures. This is my home. For Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to heaven but through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is life. That is approved of God. That's what separates true Christianity, biblical Christianity, from Satan's lies. Another way to tell, well, preacher, what's the difference between what I believe and what you preach about Jesus? The hatred. It's amazing how people will hate a man that gets a Bible and proclaims from the Bible that Jesus saves. And there are people that will get violently angry. They will cuss. They will scream. They will holler. They will say, go home. We don't want to hear it. Preach it somewhere else. Get it away. We'll hire a DJ. We'll have the DJ play loud. We'll call the police. We'll get the city lawyers. We don't want to hear about Jesus. And did you know the Bible tells you that that was already expected? Do you know the Bible says about those that live right according to Jesus will suffer persecution? Do you know that Paul wrote to a Christian church and said, have I become your enemy because I've told you the truth? Do you know that Jesus was peaceful? Jesus was without sin? Jesus is God? Jesus healed? Jesus took care of the people? Jesus fed the people? Jesus loved the people? And the people gave him a cross. And there are people here in Daytona Beach, Florida, would love to take the preacher and put him in jail. They would love to kill the preacher. They would love to do whatever they can do to get rid of the preacher. Like they got rid of Jesus. Like they got rid of Peter. Like they got rid of Paul. Like they got rid of John. Like they got rid of Andrew. Like... And I can keep going with Fox's Book of Martyrs. Listen, Jeremiah and Ezekiel were told, go preach to the people, but they're not going to listen. Go preach to the people, and they're going to hate you. Go preach to the people, and they're not going to do. Go to the people, they're going to put you in jail. Christianity, biblical Christianity, is hated. And yet throughout history, going all the way back to Jesus Christ, men and women have preached the Bible. Men and women have stood on the street side. They have stood in the field. They have stood in the factories. They have stood and sat everywhere exalting Jesus Christ. And though it may not please you, Romans chapter 10 says that the feet of the preacher pleases God. And let me tell you, this preacher would rather please God than please you. 
I don't care what you think about the preaching. I don't care about what you feel about the preaching. I don't care if you're offended about the preaching. The Bible tells me, go into the world and preach the gospel. If you don't like it, you move. This preacher staying put here as long as God will lend me my breath and to have me preach about Jesus. And to preach the suffering and the death according to the scriptures of Jesus Christ. And the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's so great that the fact is, when I think, are people listening? I mention about Jesus. I will hear somebody get upset, and I will say, Amen, glory to God, they're hearing about Jesus. And it excites me more that people are hearing about Jesus. Because Jesus is worthy to be praised. Jesus is worthy to be exalted. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. My prayers before I come here is, Lord, how I may please you. My flesh don't like it. My flesh don't want to be here. My flesh would rather be home back in bed. But the Spirit says, get up, get the Bible, and exalt Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ is worthy to be praised. Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. Now, Jesus Christ doesn't do you no good after you're dead. You can't say after you're dead, oh, I'll believe in Jesus now. Death is too late. You have got to put your faith and trust in Jesus before you die, not after. There is salvation. There is a heaven. And as much as there is a heaven, there is a hell. And in heaven, there's the water of life. Freely. You don't pay for the water that's in heaven. It's free. Revelation 21 and 22. There is water in heaven and it's crystal, it's clear, it's pure, it's without curse, without infirmity. There is that thirst quencher. Jesus said, he is the water of life. The Bible spoken about the water. But in hell, there is no water. Many people believe that they're going to drink alcoholic beverages in hell. You can't have alcohol without water. It takes gallons and gallons and gallons of water to make a can of beer. And where you have no water, and you will not have water in hell, you won't have beer. The rich man that went into hell, according to the Gospel of Luke, by Jesus Christ himself, he said, oh, if I could just have a drop. Dip your finger in water. That rich man in hell did not want alcohol. That rich man in hell did not want grape juice. He didn't want orange juice. 
He wanted a little drop of water to cool his tongue that is tormented in the flame. We have bottles of water here. We have refreshing water here. We have refreshing drinks here at these booths. Some of these booths have water that you can buy. It's refreshing. It is cooled water at a price. But no matter what, you cannot get even a drop of water in hell. And that rich man, that rich man, he had the money. He had the fame. He had the wealth. He couldn't get a drop of water. He was rich on the earth, but he wasn't rich in hell. But there's abundance of water in heaven. And that abundance of water in heaven through Jesus Christ. The water of life. He told that woman, any that would drink that his water will never thirst again. That rich man in hell and anybody in hell thirsts, thirst, thirst again and will thirst for all eternity because they tasted not the water of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. They did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There are some Baptists that believe we'll be eating in heaven. I don't know. But if we do eat in heaven, I'm not sure. I know of a surety that there is no food in hell. It's too hot. It's too hot to have a garden. There's no fertile ground in hell to raise crops. And if you had a cow in hell, it would be barbecued. There is no water, there is no food in hell. Yet in heaven, there is that water. And I know for the healing of the nations, the healing of the nations, I know there is the leaf of the tree of life. For the healing of the nations. I know in New Jerusalem for the Christians and those that will visit New Jerusalem, I know there's a street of gold. A street, not plural. It says street of gold. And yet a lost man that rejects Jesus Christ lives in a flame of fire, the lake of fire that burneth forever. There is no road, there is no foundation in a fire. There's nothing to set your foot on in hell, not in a flame of fire. Yet in heaven, in New Jerusalem, you can put your feet upon the street of gold, a rock hard substance. The Bible says not only gold, but pure gold, clear gold. That street that's in heaven that is gold is clear. No impurities. Gold that is yellow has impurities. There are no impurities in heaven. All is clean. 
All is pure. All is right. But heaven is only obtained through the Lord Jesus Christ. He that has the Son hath everlasting life. Jesus Christ will give you life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You only get to heaven of rest, of comfort, of peace, of purity, of pureness, of holiness, and righteousness forever before the throne of God and the throne of the Lamb of Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. in the presence of God forever on a street of gold with the water of life is only through Jesus Christ. It's not through your church. It's not through your baptism. It's not by you doing good. It's not by charity. It's not by feeding the poor. It's by the finished work of Jesus Christ who suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is eternal life. That is approved by God. And that Jesus himself, himself, Jesus said, I am, Jesus am, the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father, God, heaven, except but through me. Jesus speaking. Don't you put no salvation trust in me. Don't you count on me to save you. It's all by Jesus. There is no hope in the Pope. There is no hope in the church. There is no hope in baptism. It is only truly Jesus Christ that saves. You'll not only knock on heaven's door, but enter through the door of heaven by the one that said, I am the door, and that's Jesus. That eternal life rests upon Jesus Christ. Peter's not going to stand at the door. For the door is Jesus. The entrance through to God is Jesus Christ. And when you don't go through the door of Jesus Christ, you will go through the door of hell. And when you get into hell, there is no fire exit. There's no emergency exit. There's no door to exit hell. Once you enter the gates of hell, you will remain in hell. Forever. And once you enter in heaven through the sacrifice, through the finished work of Jesus Christ, when you enter into heaven, you are in heaven, and you don't come out of heaven. 
You're not going to enter heaven one day and fall. You're not going to join the rebellion in heaven. You're saved, once saved, always saved. You can't lose it. It wasn't yours to lose. I can't imagine Almighty God forgetting or losing or misplacing anything. I can't picture God that made the solar system. Oh, gee, where did I put that comet today? Where did I put that planet today? God doesn't forget. God doesn't lose. God doesn't misplace. Your salvation can be trusted in the salvation of Jesus Christ. It's not your salvation. You may claim it personally, but it's not yours. It's God's. And it is, if it is your salvation, then you can lose it. If it's your salvation, you can lose it like your car key. Get God's salvation. Put your salvation in God and trust in God who can't lose. God doesn't lose. I read the end of the book. God turns out as the winner, the finisher. And he's the author. Jesus Christ is the author. He's the finisher. He's the alpha. He's the omega. I read about the devil. I read about Satan. He loses. Satan will end up in the hell that you will go if you continue to reject Jesus. If you continue to reject Jesus Christ, you continue to reject God, you will go to the same place Satan goes, to hell. Now man will say, go to hell, but we preach how not to go to hell. And how not to go to hell is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Listen how loud that plane is. That plane is loud. And yet you don't yell at the pilot. Now you're not yelling at the preacher, you're yelling at Jesus. When the Apostle Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, after he was killing and imprisoning and torturing the Christians, Jesus told Paul, why persecute thou me? Listen, Paul didn't persecute Jesus. And yet how Paul treated the Christians, Jesus took personally. You don't bother me when you yell and scream at me. The Bible says you're going to do it. But beware, because I am a child of God. I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am his. God has told us through the scriptures, go in the world and preach the gospel. I am doing exactly what you do with a child of God. Jesus Christ takes personally. So your reactions to the preacher, Jesus takes personally. Good to see you, brother. How you doing? Am I? I love you. I'm so proud you're here. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Didn't want to think I was blowing you off, but I got some folks that I've sent over.
Have they ever seen my little artwork? Yep. I'll be doing some Jesus things too. All right. Jesus loves you and let people know. All right. So you'll, you'll be able to give them away. Okay. All right. Love you. Love you. The Apostle Paul, before he was saved, tortured Christians, and Jesus said, Why persecute thou me? When I speak through the Bible, through the Word of God, be careful of what's your reaction. Be careful of your mouth. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Every idle word man shall give an account. There is coming a judgment day for the saved and for the lost. Everything will be judged that's not under the blood. <coughs> now as for me, I confess my sins to Jesus Christ. I don't go to a priest. I don't go to my pastor. I go to Jesus. I go to the blood of Jesus Christ with my sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But I have unconfessed sins. <laughs> Any and every sin that is not under the blood of Jesus, saved or lost, will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. There are sins that are in my life that will never, ever appear before God because they are under the blood of Jesus Christ. When I was a boy, I used to shoplift. All the shoplifting I did is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for the blood of Jesus. I had a time growing up. I had a bad night with the experience of alcohol, DUI, and assault. And I was taken to the police department. Those sins and those crimes are under the blood of Jesus Christ. They will never appear at the judgment seat of Christ. There are charges that have been made to me that are factual. They are true. And I stood guilty. I confessed. I put under the blood of Jesus Christ and God forgave and God cleansed me. Now there are sins I forgot. There are sins I have not confessed. Maybe I confessed them haphazardly. They're going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to burn up. There'll be no rewards for those sins that are not under the blood. But if you have never put your trust in Jesus Christ, you have never put your faith in Jesus, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, all your sins, Every one of your sins will be judged at the great white throne judgment and there's no time. The line will be longer than Walmart. 
Jesus said every idle word, every idle, every joke, everything you said, every word, idle word, will be judged. If it's not under the blood, if it did not glorify Jesus Christ, you'll be judged. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How about all the times you've taken the name of Jesus Christ in vain? You'll be judged. How about all the times that you goddamn or God damn it, you'll be judged. Every idle word. How about every word of gossip that's untrue? Or if it is true, you had no business spreading it. How about every filthy joke? Every cruel remark? Every lie, every cussing. How about you saying, I will do something, and you didn't do it? Every lie. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. See, you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are a sinner. You sin with the mouth. You sin with the eyes. You sin with the ears. You sin with your fingers. You sin, you sin with your feet. You go places where you're not supposed to be going. You touch things you're not supposed to be touching. Your eyes have seen things you weren't supposed to be looking at. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You have thought thoughts you shouldn't be thinking about. You take your five senses and you take your five senses of how many years you've been alive. Now, I don't have a calculator here. But you take your five senses for every year you've been living and you times that 365 days of the year and then you times it by 24 hours. You times it by 60 minutes. How about your idleness? How about not doing nothing when you should have been doing something? That's a sin. Gluttony is a sin. Wasting money is a sin. The worship of anything but God is a sin. Whether it be a ball team, it be a career, a car, a spouse, a child, money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Everything you do will be judged one day unless you put it under the blood. I didn't say put it through the water. Water can't cleanse sin. You can't cleanse your sin by church attendance.
You can't cleanse your sin by giving money. Sin is not cleansed by feeding the poor. Doing good cannot match the blood of Jesus Christ. When the Bible says there's none that doeth good. Your attitude is a could be a sin. You know, there's one thing that, that preachers, even I, miss. There is a whole realm of things that will be judged at the judgment day that we don't even think about. A cocky attitude is sin. Sarcasm can be sin. Pride is a sin. I'm proud to be American. That's a sin. Nowhere in the pages of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is pride and being proud ever spoken about as being good. And yet we got Americans that are proud. We got preachers that are proud. We got Christians that are prideful. That's a sin. I'm proud of my children. That's a sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. You know the Bible says. That whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart. Has committed adultery with her. You say well preacher I didn't sleep with another woman. You don't have to sleep with another woman. You just have to think about it. That's the dangers of pornography. Looking and thinking is an adulterous act according to the Bible. If you are involved with pornography in the pages of the Bible, Matthew 5, 28, you are an adulterer even though you have not been in bed with another woman. When you think about a woman in a lustful way, Jesus says that is a charge of adultery. And let me tell you, in Daytona Beach, Florida, with a beach here and the bathing suits, if you're a halfway decent man, you are challenged with sin. And that's one of the commandments, is thou shalt not commit adultery. And you would think, oh, you know, I've been faithful to my wife. On the computer screen, are you faithful to her? Those magazines, are you faithful? Are you reading books you shouldn't be reading? You see, adultery doesn't have to be in a physical bed. It could be in your mind. It could be in your thoughts. It could be in your dreams. Do you realize the dreams that you dream may sin against God? I dreamed I was rich and had everything I wanted. That's coveting. That's a sin. Thou shalt not covet. And judgment day is going to be busy. Especially the great white throne judgment. And it's great that time stops before the great white throne judgment. Because when you are not under the blood of Jesus Christ, everything you have done will be judged. Again, me, I was saved April 25th, 1987. 
all the sins that are under the blood of Jesus Christ will not be brought at my judgment. Now the sins that I have not confessed, the sins that I have heartedly confessed, will be judged. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Judgment is coming. You will stand before God when the Bible says prepare to meet thy God. Listen, if the Christian at their judgment, is going to have sin unconfessed. What about you have never put your faith in Jesus? You'll have all, all your sin will be open. Can you imagine your wife or your husband seeing everything that you've done that you don't want them to see? All secrets shall be made manifest. Unless it is under the blood of Jesus Christ saved or lost, it will be opened up at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. 